Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Chris and partially sponsored by uh, Teresa as well. This is a long one. Here's Chris's story. Hello, Ollie. Thank you for taking the time to read the story. The two parts of the submission include this message with an audio clip of eight phone calls tied together so you only have to deal with one clip. I appreciate your efforts and while the purpose of the submission is to expose my 550 pound covert narc father. Ugh, you. <laughs> Please feel free to point out any narc tendencies in me. I'm sure I'm good to go, but that doesn't mean we can't have blind spots. 550 pounds. 550 pounds. Look, I'm heavy now and I'm probably as heavy as I've been in my life right now, but I am nowhere near 550 pounds. And I know how much overeating I'm doing to just to get this size. Just to be like this, I can't, the, the, the entitlement and the narcissism that it takes to become 550 pounds is astounding, is astounding. The baby boy mentality, like just, and knowing from, and knowing from, your profile on Facebook and seeing how old you are, I can already tell your father's a baby boomer. So what you're dealing with is a 550 pound baby boy, baby boomer entitled, oh, Starve it, I'm hungry, feed me, feed me. Ugh. I, 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 I put these people, these, these, these people, these, these overeating, these 500, 600 pound, 700 pound life people in the same category as, as hoarders. It's all about control. It's all about control and bullying everybody around them. It's borderline personality disorder. But for him to be 550 pounds and for you to be writing in tells me you're probably the victim of a, a, enabling his shoveling, shoveling it into his mouth or strapping the fat boy's feed bag on for him. I've redacted last names and other identifying information from this reading and the, and, and, and the audio. I don't care who finds this. Feel free to use first names. For background, I've been listening to your channel for over three months. While there are many helpful NARC channels, I'm drawn to yours more than others, as I like your focus on NARC parents, and in particular, baby boomers. There you go. When I found your channel, I told my brother who lives with me that, I quote, finally found someone who hates boomers more than I do. I acknowledge it's not all boomers, but it's too many of them. Exactly. Please do not, do not put... I'm a boomer. Why do you keep saying this? You can't broad brush. Yeah, I can, but it's not everybody. It's about 90% of you. But for the ones who kept to keep repeatedly saying it in the comments, I have to wonder. I have to start wondering. I regularly listen to your video, Narcissistic Baby Boomers Realize the Jig is Up. And at one point was listening to it on the way home from work every day. I love the feeling of justice that comes from seeing these people get what they deserve, even if it's even if it's too little, too late, and too rare. Oh, that was the one. I think that was Graham's net, right? That blog. Somebody pointed me to a blog of a bunch of baby boomers crying because their adult children cut them out. Your jig is up video speaks right to our scenario. We both laughed at the quote. Here's my elaborate scheme. Fuck you. There's my elaborate scheme. There it is. Right. They were saying in the video, in, in this blog and this grant that we're coming up with these elaborate schemes against them to stay away from. And like, no, no, here's our scheme. Fuck you. Stay away from me. That's the scheme. 
That's the scheme, and they can't face it. And they realize that the jig is up. You know, they realize, when you're seeing it in these blogs, where they're crying and boo-hoo, booty-hooty-hooing, okay, all, all over the place. They realize they're exposed. That's my favorite part, because that's how you have to deal with these people. The only thing they understand is narcissistic injury. My brother had a light bulb go off when you said, quote, I thought my parents were some sort of master manipulators that nobody could ever see through. And it made him realize he wasn't crazy. Let's jump in. I'm an older millennial who is a clinical health care provider who maintains his license. Great. So you can use that clinical health care provider license. Okay. Defeat fat boy, right? Right. Because I, I can already tell everything in your life has been to be in service of fat boy. I have a 550 pound baby boomer father who has, over the decades, allowed his health, histrionic nature, and various forms of abuse to ruin the lives of the family members around him and alienate many, including his older brother, myself, my brother Andrew, who is my roommate and is several years my junior. Know also that I grew up with a sister who is two years younger than me, but is a flying monkey who I've also gone no contact with. As of right now, my brother and I are the black sheep, formerly the golden children, and my sister is now the golden child, formerly the black sheep. As Andrew and I have grown a brain and decided to stop putting up with the dysfunction. The reason my sister used to be the black sheep is because of the conflicts between her and my father during her teenage years regarding smoking, dating, and who she was hanging out with. She gets her stubbornness from my father, so there's a lot of conflict between two people who never take no as an answer. It was no secret in our family that she was always a lot more like him. I went no contact with my parents and sister about eight months ago before I even knew what was going, what going no contact or narcissism was. I did it after I wrote an email summarized below to my parents requesting a time to sit down and discuss all the abuse that's taken place in our family. Yep, I tried that. You can't discuss shit with baby boomers because they're going to turn it right. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? I gave you this. I gave you that. <coughs> Believe me, at the sit down was the famous line my father said to my brother, you should have died on that slab. We went to a therapist to try to figure out how to talk to them. <laughs> Boy, did that go off the, roll, the, off the rails immediately. Long before I wrote the email, I was 95 to 99% sure I didn't want to hear from them ever again. Rather than ghosting, I wanted to give them to, a chance to know that I was upset over years of abuse, why, and and an opportunity to either apologize or blow it so I could be done for good. So you were kind of looking for some sort of closure. It's hard to get. Hard to get. As I was pretty sure they would, my parents sent an email response playing the victim trying to turn it turn it around. You'll see below. Yeah, I, of course, that's, that, that's just what they do. That's what they always do. I made it clear in my email that if they tried to avoid accountability or play the victim, I'd cut contact with them permanently. Yet, that's exactly what they did. Since their email, I haven't responded or communicated back in any way, shape, or form, and never will, despite their many emails, physical mailings of old possessions, 14-page letters, burned DVDs and thumb drives with home videos of us attempting to, I guess, have us forget about the horrible shit they refused to acknowledge they did, much less apologize for. Here is a screenshot of all the contact attempts which we collect for evidence but never respond to. Keep in mind, he sends this all after telling me never to contact him again. Just a lot of guilt. Oh, and the reason I'm not doing the picture in picture because that app isn't working. I have to get another one. And it was it was just distorting the mic after after thirty seconds, so 
I have to find another one. I'll have none of this home video bullshit as the things you're supposed to do can never be justifications for the things you should never do. Over a year, <clears throat> hold on. I'll have none of this home video bullshit as the things you are supposed to do can never be a justification for the things you should never do. Over a year ago, I bought my first house and offered for my adult brother to move in with me while he sets up his future. I wanted him to get away from the constant upset of our histrionic, emotionally turbulent father and the offloading of responsibilities from the older people to the younger people, including painting the fountain, siding, yard, card repair, pet care, and most importantly, the final straw, the illegal construction of a homemade oxygen chamber, which my brother and I refused to help with for legal safety and ethical reasons. More on this later, as it is a cornerstone of conflict behind this submission. <clears throat> One of the biggest fights I had with my parents was when they wanted me to, to use my employee discount to buy them fucking diamond jewelry and fine jewelry at work. Okay. They don't care about safety. They don't care about ethics. They don't care about putting you in a fucking precarious situation as long as it benefits them. A homemade oxygen chamber, a hey, fat boy. Pick up a salad and take a walk. You won't need the oxygen chamber. Trust me. Fuck. The background on my father and family. My father decided for what you were doing with, decided what you were doing with your free time. And if you took as and if you so much as took too long to give a happy response, he would go histrionic. While he is 550 pounds and spends most of his time at his computer chair, downstairs recliner, or upstairs recliner, he is mobile enough to stand, but usually for no longer than a few minutes at a time. He can walk himself to the restroom where he requires the help of our mom, who he has effectively turned into a nursemaid for his every physical need since 2009 when she lost her job due to the economic crash. He cannot be left alone for longer than 15 to 30 minute run up, run ups to the grocery store. Of course not. This is what they do. It's all about control. It's control and bullying as he sits there like fucking Jabba the fucking hut. When Jabba can't encase you in kryptonite, okay, they make you their makes you their servant, okay. Just keeps getting fatter and fatter and fatter. What did I say? Cryptocarbonite, carbonite, not kryptonite, carbonite. Is that a carbonite? So he has to figure out another way to trap your mother. <clears throat> she used to push back against him years ago when my sister and I were kids, but over the years she has given up and now just enables him and walks on eggshells. She acknowledges this whenever I've brought it up to her privately, but still will never confront him. When she pushed back, he would silence her by smashing items that she liked until she would stop arguing and stop crying about what she just broke. She was to clean up the mess. See the scene of Carlo beating Connie from The Godfather. Instead of confronting him now, she now she vented emotional baggage to my brother and I to have release whenever he would nap which was the only break from him she ever gets. She also physically abused us as children and did, and she did choose her husband. So I have no sympathy. He urinates without assistance, but emerges with urine all over his sweatpants, which he cuts into shorts for him. When he defecates, he needs her assistance with opening with the door open, wiping with a bath towel as toilet paper, isn't an option. 
So he has to wipe his ass with a fucking... <laughs> what a slob. What a fucking pig. The worst part, he has a bilateral leg edema. Of course he does. Where, where fluid pools in his lower legs, which never heal. He has weeping leg ulcers under his knees that extend down to his ankles and and palipomimosis on both legs, which are large, disgusting, cellular growths that resemble a combination between burnt sausage on a pizza and the mess that got left behind when the main monster gets defeated by light and water at the end of the movie Gremlins. These growth only grow back if he cuts them off, which he has done with a large chef's knife on a few occasions in in his shower, a bloody graphic mess for which he once showed us pictures for sympathy as a last ditch effort to gain our favor right before we moved out. This didn't work because both of my both my brother and I understood that he was that this was all his doing, despite his many attempts to use word choice to act as though this was some unexpected occurrence. They started a small <clears throat> They started as small legions, but now his legs are saturated, requiring constant wrapping and unwrapping with gauze and duct and tape and gauze and tape due to the nonstop dripping. Oh, God. The frequency of this need every 15 minutes or so has robbed my mother of her personhood and she doesn't even have a moment to herself. He would yell and throw things if you didn't wrap or unwrap his legs in just the right way, hurt him even a little, did it too fast because you wanted it to be done or too slow, attempting not to hurt him because you were afraid to anger him. He'd get mad if, if you pinched your nose, stopped breathing through your nose, or wore a face mask to avoid the smell, which was so pungent as to travel upstairs. It's rotting. Ugh. Call an ambulance. Put him in a fucking hospital. Requiring you to be in a closed room upstairs with at least one large scented candle. He'd have to place... <clears throat> he'd have to have placemats put under his seat at the computer table or else his legs would leak into the carpet. I helped my mother take the placemats into the kitchen and clean maggots out of them. We never told him we were doing this because we feared he would get upset in general or at us. He saw the maggots himself one day and it caused him to get quiet for a while. While you were eating, he would use a wooden back scratcher to hold open his pal palimatosis, peeling back the hard surface, revealing its wet center, telling you to look at it <clears throat> and, ha and to imagine what it was like for it like for him as if it was no fault of his own <sighs> keep shoveling the food in though how who's bringing him the food he never used phrases that would acknowledge that he made the choices that led to being overweight and used phrases like when i got sick when i became sick just sick as he randomly got cancer, as opposed to gaining weight progressively over the years. He'd also say, quote, nobody ever thinks about what it's like to be me around here. And quote, if you were to just spend 30 seconds in my body, you would scream. No, I'd get on a fucking treadmill, fat boy. I'd stop eating, fat boy. <clears throat> He blames his mother for overfeeding him as a child, as if he has no choice in the matter once he turned 18. Home movies do reveal that he was overweight as a child, and while I recognize that parents are responsible when their children are overweight, we must recognize our own agency in the matter as adults. He was in shape in his young adulthood when he played sports and met my mother. His weight issues started, back, started back just before he married her. As a baby, I had never seen him less than 300 pounds, 
and it's only increased steadily since then. As a kid, I assumed that all the ladies were big until I went to public school and saw what normal was. This sort of shock happened again when I was 16. I got my first job and couldn't believe just how patient everyone seemed when they didn't chew when they didn't chew my head off for messing up their order. It's not that everyone was incredibly patient. It's just that I wasn't used to not being yelled at for every mistake. Yep, I know what that's like. <clears throat> Speaking of my first job, I spent the first four to five years of my work in, working life handling, handing over 30% 30 to 100% of my income to my parents in what turned out to be a major mistake on my part that I deeply regret. I volunteered to give them what I thought would only be 10% of my income for around a year because I knew it would make things easier financially on my parents since my narc father was applying for disability due to his congestive heart failure and shortness of breath brought on by his obesity. He eats himself into that condition and then he wants to go fucking collect fucking disability. I, it's just... What a system the boomers set up for themselves. <clears throat> I was opening up Pandora's box as they always wanted 30% to 100%, <clears throat> which very quickly gave me empathy burnout as I was working, going to school, and couldn't buy clothes or take out my first girlfriend who eventually left me. He was already also ta taking my sister's money, who was 14 and working at the time. Giving them money, my parents couldn't even hold up their end of the bargain to eliminate the dysfunction in the house while I did this. It was a very stupid thing to do. Between my sister and I, this was several grand earned in the early to mid-2000s of fast food money. Even then, I questioned his decision to, to apply for disability to my mother, saying that it was meant for people who are truly disabled, not overweight, saying, quote, why, because he's overweight? My mother couldn't say anything back. My entry into college was delayed by this for years, and I regret it tremendously. My parents paid me back when the disability came through, but I could not get the four to five years back. So they ended up, he ended up getting his fucking disability for being a big fat fucking slob. <clears throat> well, at least disability was smart enough to cut off my father after fucking six, uh, 10 years, seven years, however long he goddamn collected before they realized he was completely full of shit. Now that I'm out of college and make a decent living, I realize that I unwittingly delayed my career in adulthood to give him money to enable him into a government program where he takes yet more money out of my paycheck even now, all for the privilege of overeating. He bounced from doctor to doctor and hates all doctors because they won't simply write him whatever prescription he wants indefinitely, saying of one doctor, quote, they can just write me my prescriptions and leave me the fuck alone. He gets upset when they require him to do anything that involves a lifestyle change or that doesn't involve getting a script. According to him, all, doc all his doctors, quote, threw him under the bus because he gets a narcissistic injury. When they're finally up front and warn him about his condition and how his eating has to change. Oh yeah, you can't take the food from the baby boy. He always does this whenever anyone attempts to hold him accountable for anything. He plays the victim to try to distract from the fact that he's doing something he shouldn't do. You get to hear this in a recording later regarding my PayPal account that I took back from him. He had the same general practice doctor, but after years of my father refusing to make any changes or accept surgery, the GP aggressively questioned my mother on food and how it was prepped. I wasn't pr present for this, but I can tell you that when you're under a doctor's care, you have to demonstrate some type of improvement over time or the doctor's ass can be held for supervised neglect, which I'm sure explains the doctor's aggressive approach after years of him gaining weight steadily with no signs of improvement at all. 
my father doesn't understand this. Right. If he's treating him for years and the guy won't listen and your father won't listen to him and then your father dies, okay, he doesn't want to have to fight some fucking malpractice suit from your mother or he doesn't know. Like, how do you let him? He's under your care and you let him get worse. And da -da -da -da. No. No, and it's bad for business. If you're 600 pounds... Okay, and you tell somebody and you tell me you've had the same general practice doctor for 10 years and you're still 600 pounds. I'm going to say you got a bad fucking doctor. I don't want to go to your doctor. My mother is the only one who can and does bring food in the house. To see this dynamic, just watch my 600-pound life on TLC or a YouTube documentary called Half Ton Man featuring Patrick Duell. I've watched the, me and Charlene have watched the shit out of my 600-pound life. They're all a bunch of narcissists. There are some, I've seen a few women on there who truly wanted to lose weight and it was the husbands who were feeders trying to sabotage. One way or the other, somebody's got borderline personality disorder. And it's a means of controlling everybody's life around them. Oh, the baby. The, I, this is where I get my whole my frame of reference. Is say, like, I'm just seeing your father on 600-pound life. Cry, I'm hungry and I try to lose weight and I just can't. Ugh. Shut up, fat boy. Slap that fifth chin of yours, fatty. Oh, fucking take a walk around the block. I'll give you a grape. Go ahead, fatty. Go ahead. That's how you... No, you're not getting any food, fatso. You're not getting any food, fatso. That's how it's going to be. Just like with the hoarder. I would take the hoarder outside the house, empty the house, and burn all their shit right in front of them. And say, go ahead, hoard it out again. Hoard it out again. I'm gonna do the same thing. Not this. Oh, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw this out. You know, you gotta eat health. Oh, fuck that. That's what they want. They want that because that's how they control you. They control you through your time, through your energy, by wasting it, by making you listen to their histrionic fucking bullshit. Making you fucking validate their bullshit feelings. Oh, well, you know, they feel they have this attachment to these cut-off toenails. No, they don't. Don't validate that shit. When the GP, when the general practice doctor was stern with him, the narcissistic injury to my father was so bad he never went back. Of course not. He went on an overly restrictive diet with fantasies of going back and giving the doctor what for. When his legs actually started healing, he went back to his old ways with his eating like he always does. This was in 2012. So he has the ability to lose weight. But he went one. He only did it to spite the doctor. How fucked up that is! Oh, I know I can lose weight and eat right, but I'm not going to do it to you. I'm going to do it on my own way. And to be honest with you, at 550 pounds, I don't think there is something as an overly restrictive diet, to be honest with you. <clears throat> he has seen me get in shape using P90X and a personal trainer on a bodybuilder diet of five healthy meals a day. Neither this nor my status as a healthcare professional ever made him listen to me at all. Of course not. He's a boomer. Boomers never have to listen to you. Even though you're you you know, you're a healthcare provider and in great shape, okay, and he's five hundred and fifty pounds, boomer trumps all. But I'm a boomer, so that negates any any type of education, 
past history, what your reality. Boomer trumps everything. Boomer trumps it all. <clears throat> I made him food which he might eat. That's why, so he could reject it. But he would never have my mother bring these foods into the house for himself. He didn't want to learn and he didn't care. He could never understand how he was eating five meals a day and still losing weight. But would never ask for any of the foods that I was making. Or even the recipes, which were extremely simple. To his personality, he's overly sensitive to where you have to exhaustively monitor your every vocal tone and facial expression so as not to offend or upset him. No, <clears throat> no one I know is worse than him in this way. Growing up with this, you develop appeasing habits. His overly sensitive nature never meant a lack of hypercriticism on his part. He is critical of everyone for even the smallest reasons imaginable. Right, they can dish it out, they can't take it. Remember, Jabba the Hutt sits up on a throne. He just sits there. That's your father. It gives him a superior position. Even He even watches the show My 600 Pound Life and shouts tough and tough shit at the TV when the obese person complains about their station in life or they cry out in pain when having their body transported. I've only ever seen him have a few friends when I was younger, but now he has none at all because even those few people weren't good enough. The conflict around the oxygen chamber. Despite being capable of more, he constantly asks... Uh, Ask others for everything, including things that are within arm's reach. People avoid him to prevent a, t a task list. In getting others to do things for him, he discovered online that some people with leg ulcers have some healing by, pla by being placed in an oxygen chamber. For this, you need a specialist, a diagnosis, and they have to clear you for this risky treatment. After another episode at the wound care center where he got upset with the expense and supposed lack of information, he decided unilaterally that he's going to order supplies from Home Depot and build his own homemade oxygen chamber in his garage using our mother's credit card and his as his credit is bad from three foreclosures. He didn't ask if we thought it was a good idea or if anyone was willing to help. Just started ordering supplies, right? A garage oxygen chamber, right? You're not going to blow half the fucking neighborhood sky high, fat boy. Once he told me he wanted to operate the oxygen knobs, I told him, no, as a condition of my medical license, I'm not legally allowed to practice areas of medicine outside my scope of practice. I'm not a... A bariatric doctor. The penalty for doing this would be a permanent rev revocation of my medical license. They don't care. They don't care. I told my parents, listen, I told my parents when they wanted my disc, like, I could get, I fire people for this. I could get fired. They said, you're lying. You're lying. No. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. This conversation took place on a day where the, where the ordered supplies began showing up. It led to a lengthy conversation where he wasn't hearing that there were legal, safety, and ethical considerations. We didn't know what we were doing in building an oxygen chamber. Yeah, don't you understand? Boomer trumps all. Boomer trumps everything. I'm a boomer. I get to do whatever the fuck I want. Doesn't matter. Fuck your license. Fuck your knowledge. Fuck your laws. Fuck it all. I'm a boomer. I do what I want. We didn't know what we were doing in building an oxygen chamber. I wasn't happy with the risk it posed to him and the house. And there could be an explosion resulting in his death. Or he could lose the function of a lung in the oxygen chamber or burst an eardrum. He kept trying to assure me that nothing would happen, but this was a red flag, especially as his assurances didn't mean shit. And when things went and 
if and when things went wrong. If there were to be an injury, accident, or death, the police would be involved. It would be discovered that I was practicing a form of medicine outside my scope using an illegally manufactured class two medical device. I wasn't about to risk that shit for anything, especially for an adult in his early 60s who made the grown ass decision to eat himself to 550 pounds. Not fucking happening, as it shouldn't. My brother Andrew also had no interest in it for the same reasons, minus the medical license. In addition to working with him on anything was a nightmare as he wanted to micromanage every step and get upset with you if you messed up or asked too many questions. Initially, my coward mother told us that she wasn't going to help him with the oxygen chamber. She assured us, quote, and what you should have said is if you try to build it, I'm going to call the cops on you myself. Not only are you not getting an oxygen chamber, if you try to build one, I'm going to call the cops on you myself. She assured us, quote, just wait for him to order all the supplies. Once he gets the idea that everyone doesn't want to help him, he'll get the idea that, a, that he bit off more than he could chew and just return all the supplies. How is he going to do that at 550 pounds? Like, how is he going to do that? Of course, you could see this was just another attempt to avoid confronting him in his wrath. What sense does it make to let someone order supplies on your credit card if you already know that they're just going to be returned? Stupid. Once all the supplies showed up, I came downstairs one day, looked out the window, and saw her helping him construct the oxygen chamber. This was without explanation from her, and I lost all respect for her that day. Important, when I confronted her about this later, she went biblical and said that she changed her mind to help him because of her wedding vows to stick with her husband in sickness and in hell. Oh, fuck off. Fuck, oh God, whenever it's convenient, they go to God, don't they? comes holier than now, something you can't understand. Bullshit. Of course, ignoring his decision to eat himself to 550 pounds, and that's when Judgment Day comes. She wants to be able to have an answer for God if God asks her what she did to help and support her husband. Remember, this is the reasoning she used here is, late, is relevant later. Non-Christians will be able to see the hypocrisy in this later on. How's he going to fit his fat ass through the pearly gates? And won't he just fall through the clouds at that weight? I think there's a weight limit in heaven. There must be. Okay, because what about gluttony, dummy? You're worried about your wedding vows? How about the fucking seven deadly sins? Gluttony. Did you forget that one? Did you forget that one? There must be a weight limit in space because otherwise gluttony wouldn't be on, be one of the seven deadly sins. There's a reason why gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins because it's toxic. Because it doesn't just hurt yourself. It hurts everybody around you. Hurts your family, hurts your friends, makes you a fucking toxic monster. So you could go wipe your fucking ass with your wedding vows. <clears throat> Gluttony. How about sloth? Father's two of seven. One day, my <clears throat> one day, my brother was walking into the house, and my father, while working on the chamber, asked him to do something. My father got upset with him and said, quote, he's just standing there with his thumb in his ass and threw a screwdriver into a Home Depot bucket so hard it broke off part of the outer lining. My brother stood up to him and said, quote, you know what? If you're going to be like this when I'm trying to help you, forget it. Keep in mind that my brother already said he didn't want to help with it. My brother walked inside and that was it. My father would later play victim in this scenario by saying, quote, that was the last day I knew I lost my son, as if his actions played no role. 
The whole house was toxic and mostly quiet during these last few months before the move. Days before we moved out, there was a conflict between my brother and mother where my brother turned to speak to, turned to my mother to speak his mind, but he stopped himself and didn't. My father saw this reversal and thought it was enough to call me down from my room to talk. He threatened that if Andrew says anything to mom that he, quote, can get a healthy, can get real healthy for about 90 seconds. Yeah, I'd like to see you try, fatty. Is that a threat? Yeah, I'd like to see you try, fatty. I wanted to rip his face off right there and then, but we were moving out in a couple days and I didn't. And I didn't want to do anything to ruin my life. My investment in my future is how he got away with things. And I'll let him get, and I, and I let him get away with too much. This threat of his symbolic, this threat of his is symbolic of what he is. He pretends to be ill, sick and incapable if, if and when it benefits him, but miraculously has the energy to scream, scream to and about people for hours following an argument or to put his hands on people. People see the Emperor's transformation scene from Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, when, which captures this charade better than anything. Anytime he got upset with you and went upstairs, you'd overhear for hours as he vents about you to mom, creating a never-ending cloud of dysfunction in the home. See any movie where a kid blocks his ears while his parents fight. My father got a narcissistic injury when my brother admitted when my brother admitted when he was asked that he had accepted my offer to move out with me. They gave him a long talk about it, making shitty predictions about me that never came true regarding him doing all the chores and paying all the bills. You're the one with a medical license, dude. Unbelievable. That's the baby boomer. Just never fucking respecting anything you do. Don't matter what license you have. You don't, it don't matter. It don't matter. <clears throat> you know, years ago, I did a Skype with somebody, another, an, another doctor who's like one of the leading doctors on cochlear implants, on making, on restoring children's hearing. Okay. On restoring children, bringing bringing the ability for children to hear. One of the leading doctors in, in, in this field, in, his, in the country. Okay? And he can't get the respect out of his boomer parents either. It doesn't matter. You don't understand. It does. When I say these boomers sit on a high horse, this is what you get from most of them. This is what they do to their kids. This is what they do to their millennial kids, to their Gen X kids. They make you feel you are never good enough. Ever. And you just write it off. You're going to fail. He's going to fail. He's going to fail. Don't matter. Don't matter. He's going to fail. And you're going to be a loser like him. <clears throat> That's the boomer, man. They need you to fail. Because then they don't got to look in the mirror at their, at their own loser selves on the day of our move my father hid upstairs in his room in his recliner because he didn't even want to face the movers this didn't stop my pain in the ass mom from trying to remind me every 30 seconds to, to make sure the movers knew not to hit this or bump that or scrape this and so on so forth and so on my father had our mother give us this victimhood-based message from him that was going to take them about a month or so to get over the, the hurt of all this movie and everything. They didn't want us reaching out to them for at least a month or so. She didn't know that even before then. I knew probably I wasn't going to ever speak to them again. I was about 95 to 99% sure that I never wanted to hear from them ever again. We moved out and I couldn't believe just how much peace this brought. My brother and I felt the need to get closer to God in the aftermath of everything. I understand that not everyone accepts religion as the solution for them. However, for the sake of my case, let's accept that it was it, it is the solution for me. 
we looked at a few different denominations in our area. Our parents were already phony Christians and we had enough of that. After many meetings and questions, we found a new home and my results don't lie. My desire to get close to God got me off alcohol and pornography, which were destroying my brain. I need to work on the language and inappropriate humor, but everything's a work in progress. Plus, I don't like being dull and not getting my point across. On my brother's 19th birthday, my sister called, wished him a happy birthday, but went on about how we should call my mother and father and about how, how they miss us. I don't believe that, but I told her I'd reach out to them soon. I decided to give them one final chance to address, admit to, and apologize for all the abuse that I had been angry about over the years. The verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, all of it. This way, if I were to have a relationship with them, it would be a relationship where they had acknowledged and apologized for all the things they had done. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Pipe dream, man. Pipe dream. I didn't want to do what my sister had done, which was act like shit didn't happen. I put together a semi-chronological, incomplete collection of all the bad memories I had over the years. Since my mother cited her wedding vows and religion as justification for blindly supporting my narcissistic father without accountability, religion was the angle that I decided to take on my final attempt to reach them. From this, I'd know whether or not they were serious or just hypocrites. To summarize the email I sent, I requested to meet with them in the morning in a month from the date of the letter. This would take any excuse they could try to make out, make to get out of it due to short notice as they love to do, usually citing his health as an excuse. I asked to speak without interruption as they are both famous for interrupting people and my father loved to speak for tens of minutes to hours after interrupting you, a way of stopping you right there and draining your will. And you will never stop them from doing that. They can't. Even though, if, even if they agree to doing it, the second you say something, it's going to, nope. I, I told them I wanted to review a list of wrongdoings concerning more than three decades, knowing full well that they would reject this and refuse to face it if they had no character. I told them I'd be using the very principles they taught us from the Bible, like the seven deadly sins, the Ten Commandments, and others to show where their actions didn't match their beliefs a more, to more than a normal extent, knowing full well they'd fly off the handle if they were exactly who I knew they were. I explained that attempting to play the victim as a result of my letter would result in permanent cessation secession of all communication to to and from me with both parents including future romantic prod prospects and children i diligently summarize each example of wrongdoing i can remember which was about 27 recollections that had later grown to 41 as of this writing i went through everything i can remember at the time the abortion of what would have been my older sibling, remember they are Catholics, the self-neglect, alcoholism, obesity, including a burst disc in his back in 1999 and acute kidney failure in 2017, mother's enabling of this condition which included lying to us, his refusal to stick to any nutrition plan despite my guidance, the accusation of betrayal when Andrew and I refused to help him build an illegal oxygen tank chamber, <clears throat> the repeated physical abuse to us and mother with one instance brought on by abuse of either Xanax or Zoloft, beating me up against my bed while holding me by my underwear, yanking my sister's ponytail and wrenching her head left and right. Sexual abuse from my father to mother and to us, which led to a night in jail for him, where he had a beef with the police ever since. The regular yelling and fighting between the two of them, including a near divorce that traumatized my younger brother. Financial instability leading to pet deaths in two cases. My sister and I supporting them financially for years while my father stayed at home playing a PC game for hours, delaying my entry into college as well as adulthood.
raging at pets, including physical abuse, nationality-based epithets from my father to my mother, like Guinea and Wop, his breaking of others, valued possessions to silence them when losing an argument, his fits of rage, including ripping pages out of the Bible while shouting, the word of the Lord means nothing, his punching a recliner, after an eight-year-old me was having trouble breathing after drinking water from a cup with motor oil in it left out by him. At the time, he told Andrew to quit his blubbering when he was crying and praying for his rage to stop. His throwing things across the room like pill bottles, dishes, glasses, and game consoles, and punching and putting holes in walls. His raging over food prepared too slowly, incorrectly, or not on a spotless dish, or any other time he was told that we were out of any given food. His raging over people not completing tasks exactly as if it was in his head, even if and when people ask too many questions to make sure they got it right. <clears throat> Raging at people for wrapping and unwrapping his weeping legs too fast, too slow, or not just in a perfect way. Ruining high school graduations and plays with failure to attend, citing health as an excuse. Father and mother giving up on homeschooling Andrew and allowing him to vegetate on video games for years while lying to the government that he was being educated periodically when filling out government reports on his education. Father resenting existence of children yelling, I hate my kids and I hate my kids at mother and sister when I were younger and I sacrificed my health to provide for you guys. Father's refusal to take responsibility for poor decisions, stating, Kids don't come with instruction manuals. They just show up and you do the best you can. You fucking loser. Accusations of laziness towards sons from a 550-pound father who hasn't worked in 18 years toward Andrew and I while we were working five days a week in health care in a health care setting, driving three hours a day simply because we would play video games when we would come home after each long day. Father's offloading of personal responsibilities onto others, including house projects, yard maintenance, personal care, including the clipping of his toenails, the wiping of his backside after defecation, and in particular, the care of pets when everyone else already told him on multiple occasions they wanted no pets or fewer pets before he lied to everyone saying he would walk or feed them only to stop after the first two to three weeks. The incessant torment of a father's health problems, like screaming out in pain, nonstop coughing, and the constant asking for help and asking for things. If I simply had visited and brought these things up, he would have pulled, why are you dropping this bomb on me routine whenever he hears anything he doesn't like? This way he had to sit and read through what I wanted to discuss. I told him I converted from Catholicism to a different denomination of Christianity, but didn't mention the denomination to avoid sure criticism, no matter, no matter the denomination. They would later discover which denomination through my flying monkey sister who has since been cut off. <clears throat> I told him I came forward with my mistakes, repented and asked God for forgiveness. And this was, and this, and that was this, Okay, and that this was tear including tear inducing and worthwhile. Okay. I told him I came forward with my mistakes, repented and asked God for forgiveness, and that this was tear inducing and worthwhile. I told him I was unimpressed with Catholicism given their failure to imbibe its principles and the Pope's worship of Muslims and lectures on open borders as walls surround the Vatican. I told my father that if he threatened my brother Andrew with physical violence ever again, as he did the days before our moving, I can get healthy for, I can get really healthy for 90 seconds, which truly captures the duality of who he is and how he can have it any way he wants, that I would do what I could to put him in jail, just like in 2004, when he had sexually assaulted my mother, putting a black and blue on a personal part of her chest. 
I told him that was unacceptable, that he ate himself into SSDI, where I still pay every check so he can have the privilege of staying home for 18 years, playing video games, being waited on, and now boomer posting on Facebook. He took my paychecks when I was a teen and young adult, and now he uses the government to still take my money. I told him this was a baby boomer phenomenon that was 100% generational and that without this corrupt structure that they are cursed, that they've cursed our generation with and that they are the world they were handing down, that the world they were handing down isn't the one they were given. I told him to contact my brother Andrew to agree or disagree with this meeting. <clears throat> In the email, I had forgotten to mention that for years he'd call me meal wrecker because according to him, when I was a baby, I would cry as soon as the food would show up in a restaurant. And we can't be shocked that a 550 pound man doesn't want his food flow interrupted. An hours long beating my sister and I for making inappropriate jokes about Jesus uh, out of a desire to be fresh. The time he yelled at me in the parking lot of a pawn shop because I benevolently took his guitar out of pawn with my money instead of paying the ticket with his money like he instructed. How would he, how he would use the time he caught me being inappropriate with my body when I was eight years old to silence and embarrass me for his own amusement and how he incorrectly explained to me, explained that this was okay as long as it was in private. I would rather have been taught to save it for marriage and children as untangling this problem has been awful. His rule that nobody in the house was allowed to eat the last of anything and leading to the situations where there would be plenty of food in the house by volume, but nobody could eat anything because each of the food was last of something. He would scream, never mind, I don't want it, march upstairs and slam the door, shouting, everyone just needs to leave me the fuck alone. If you took so much, if you, if you so much as took too long or didn't smile when fetching him anything, particularly food. Both parents' short-lived, short-lived habit of sliding their hands down our pants to check our ass cheeks when we would sit with them with the excuse of it's just love ugh when my sister and i protested loudly and repeatedly as we were learning about inappropriate touching in school how our beatings would get harder and faster if and when my sister and i would scream this is child abuse and they and how they would threaten us with quote real child abuse in case we ever wanted to see what that actually looked like saying you have no idea what child abuse is and i'll show you some child abuse and how their definition of child abuse would have to include hitting across the face or cutting them how my father never stopped drinking beer no matter how much I begged him. How fights between my mother and father would always be much worse than physical when he drank. And how when drinking and in a mood to aggravate people, he would run, he would run his fingers down the crack of his ass, then shove his fingers into your nostrils as hard as he could, laughing as you tried to fight him off unsuccessfully, you fucking pig. oxygen tank you should have been building him a pig pen is just with, with mud so go roll around piggy the time he yelled at me for wanting to quit for wanting to quit helping him with a project at 1 a.m since i had been helping him for more than 12 hours and was waiting all day to get a workout in, screaming, fine, go work out until your biceps explode. The time he threw my cut wrist, my cut wrist in my face, screaming, oh, what do you want? Attention? When he noticed I had cut my, I had cuts on my wrist from my only suicide attempt a few days prior when the dysfunction in home was at a peak. I didn't show him these. He noticed them. 
the times we catch him using porn, whether it was walking in on both of them using it, a VHS tape I found at 14, to innocuously name files on the family computer, to my brother and I seeing it on the living room flat screen TV while walking the dogs outside. He would put bikini girls on his screensaver, much to the chagrin of my mother. However, he would get angry and pissy if she ever dared mention that she found a male on TV to be attractive, especially Tom Selleck, when she said she could imagine having chemistry with him. <clears throat> My brother and I once saw that he left his penis pump on a shelf in the shower. We mentioned that if it ever happened, to, we mentioned it and it never happened again. I accidentally saw it again when looking for shaving supplies under their counter. I find risque clothing in the laundry that belonged to my 50 to 60 year old mother that only an 18 year old could get away with. And when I asked my mother about it, she said it was because he would get these things for her to wear against her will, as she didn't feel comfortable in them. She said he could be really selfish. No shit. The time he yelled at my mother to keep losing weight so she can have no sex when she lost 30 pounds in the 2000s and he wanted more sex. The incessant, the incessant use of us children as their sounding boards and emotional receptacles every time they, were, they would fight. He didn't call my brother as instructed. Less than 24 hours later, he sends an email response where he did exactly what I thought he would, played the victim, and tried to turn it around. To summarize his response, he immediately started in with, of course, verbal abuse, attacks, straw man arguments, ad hominem, no arguments, just accusations of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, and so on and so forth. I immediately knew from this that I would never speak to him again, as he did exactly what I advised him not to do on the outset of my letter. He was playing the victim, and regardless of what the remainder of the email said, I would never speak to him or my mother ever again. He focused on what it was like from his point of view to read the email, and while saying nothing at all about what it must what must have been like for us to have lived through it, he didn't miss the chance to include the fact that this meeting would have taken place the day before Mother's Day to play victim. <clears throat> Most relevant of all, he took the fact that I was holding up their own behavior to my own Christian beliefs and twisted it saying that I was judging him, only then to quote scripture right back toward me in the same email on the topic of judging, as if someone he was doing anything different than I, as if, as if somehow he was doing anything different than what I did, demonstrating no self-awareness whatsoever. The most egregious lie of all, he tried to gaslight me into thinking that the reason our dog died in 2004 was because I didn't cut up the dog food enough when, I was, when feeding her, when at the time he took responsibility for the dog's death, stating that it was because he had us feed her way too much food, considering that she hadn't eaten over the last two to three days due to lack of finances. This was true, and I do remember it vividly, as it was one of... It was our first dog loss. The house was low on food and we were all eating very little. And the dog, not at all for two to three days. He felt, felt bad, so when my mother got paid, he had us feed her a lot. She got a stomach torsion and died. Stomach torsion is when the stomach rotates like a cement truck because the food cannot exit the stomach. And the gases expand, rupturing the stomach, killing the dog. But here he pulls, I never told you this because I wanted to protect you bit and changes the story after you took responsibility for it 16 years ago. He even says the reason he didn't ask me to cut up the food was because he didn't want to deal with my attitude when I never gave him attitude about this. And as if he isn't the adult in the situation and wouldn't still be to blame for letting me give, give said food, which was too big. Exactly. The most unforgivable threat 
He threatens to call my employer and attempt to get me fired and threatens to call my licensing board to cost me my license. He even tr he tried to gaslight me into thinking that sending the email was this big giant world ending mistake. <clears throat> he began cheap psych psycho psycho psychologizing me. Psycho. I guess psychoanalyzing me to try to explain the ins and outs of what was going on inside my head for how I could ever write such a horrible letter, including speculative guesses which were off. His projection including the made up idea that now that I had to pay bills, I was bitter and angry and therefore lashing out at him. He later accuses me of being an undeveloped man child, which is a funny complaint to hear now when in the past he's been complimentary toward my development in college anytime I helped him with anything math or science related. He used this arrested development to question me working toward my priesthood. He accuses me of being someone with the mentality of a 16 year old. He's just admitting to you what he is. That's exactly what he is. He's just projecting what he is onto you. That's all. That's as simple. He played victim saying that he had spent many nights crying themselves to sleep over us, trying to figure out what they ever did wrong and wondering how he could ever make it right, despite being given a full list that they were right now ignoring. He said he'd never contact us again, and I already showed the screenshot of his ignored attempts. He tried to make me think he tried to make me think there was a chance that the relationship could be repaired, but I went ahead and messed it all up with my email. I was just about, he was just about to make it all right until this. <clears throat> he acts so oblivious as if someone there could never be any possible way that any son could ever have any issue with him as a father, only to happen upon the answer, which which was that apparently I joined a real life cult, which if he had read my email, wouldn't have missed the fact that I was still a Christian, just a different denomination, demonstrating his ability to listen and think critically. He began to gaslight that I joined a cult, which is rich when you look at how much baby boomers love their cults. What happened with Charles Manson, Jim Jones, David Koresh, um, Rajneesh Parasham and all Boomer, all Boomer-based cults. Boomers absolutely love their cults. For baby boomers to point fingers at the youth for joining cults, as seen here in your narcissistic baby boomers realize the jig is up video, is extremely rich. He said he knew I joined a cult when I suddenly stopped posting my political on my political Facebook page. First off, this demonstrates that he's e-stalking. Secondly, this moron had no way to know that I was under two-day consecutive 30-day Facebook bans for political posts that Cuckerberg didn't fancy. Then he, then he questioned why I stayed at home so long when the answer is that I financially supported them for years, including preventing them from losing the very home I stayed in to finish my medical license. If it weren't for the money my sister and I gave them, they would have lost their home. This is mathematically undeniable. He tried to gaslight me using any event he could from my past where it was a legitimate mistake that I had made that I would never let go of, or a time where I correctly stood up for myself to him or others. In which case, he tried to gaslight it like it, I was this out-of-control busybody who tries to remake the world as I see fit with, these, with, the, with a misguided sense of fairness. He warns that if I continue to engage in behaviors that really amount to standing up for yourself, one day I'm going to cross the wrong person inserting bullshit hypothetical examples he made up about trying to stop a gas station robbery and a road rage incident, neither of which I've ever been in. This is funny because he has on many occasions in the past shared boring ass fantasies he has about shooting Islamic terrorists 
at Walmart in his hover round. I'm not kidding. He does say Walmart and he does say hover round. So he wants to do a fucking, so he wants to use a fucking hover round like a Humvee. And you're the 16 year old man child. He's fantasizing. He's fantasizing about using his fat boy scooter in Walmart as a fucking Humvee <laughs> with a 50 cal strapped to the top of it. And you're the man child, huh? And doing an interview about it with Fox News with Eric Bowling, who would only who would only who he would only demand comes back. I'm not kidding. It's a cringe of the highest order. So he would demand that Fox News rehire Eric Bowling to have his hero story, hero on a hero on a fucking Humvee, you know, on a. <laughs> oh God. The fat boomer on a fucking mobility scooter. That's that's the story. That's the story that. That, that, that you're gonna bully Fox News to rehire Eric Balling, huh? You're the 16 year old man child, though, right? Christ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then he brings up <laughs> what a fucking asshole. And the fact that he would tell people this, too. Oh my god. What a moron. Does he swing by the snack bar in his uh, on his fat boy Humvee? The fat boy Humvee. He swings by, he's got a fucking he's got fucking four fucking hot dogs, some fried chicken, and a fifty cal. He's gonna take down fucking Muhammad in the sporting goods section, huh? You're the sixteen year old though. <clears throat> <laughs> wow then he brings up altered and unaltered versions of times where he's helped me as if those somehow were the focus of my email or as if those were in any way make up for the horrible things I mentioned in my email this included the fact that my family members served as my patients as I earned my license in school and in doing so received thousands in free health care that was the safest around. He acted as if me providing free health care to them was some sort of favor that they did for me since I got the grade for it. <clears throat> he said there's no such thing as perfect parents as if holding your parents accountable for their decades of abuse somehow rises to an expectation of perfection. He gaslights that I basically never helped with anything when the opposite is true and when he wouldn't have been able to mathematically keep our home if, again, not for the money of my sister and I gave him for years. He accuses me of having brainwashed my brother Andrew since we drew much closer to one another in our final months there with our refusal to help with the manufacture of the illegal oxygen chamber and because he was absolutely sick and tired of giving every, every little thing under the sun as to do as soon as he walked in the door from high school. He accuses me of having usurped them as parents from when I homeschooled him myself after they gave up homeschooling and let him vegetate over SpongeBob and video games for years. And also for when I took an 18-year-old him for driving lessons when they lied to him saying that they wouldn't that they would take him to get back his social security card that they lost. But if he helped them with the eBay for one day, only to then use e eBay business as their excuse not to take them when the day came. What is it with boomer parents and losing their kids' social security cards? Get your fucking shit together. Because it's a way of control. If you don't have your social security card, it's hard. You can't get a license. You can't open a bank account. You can't gain independence. It's a means of control. You're lucky in a sense that they needed your money because otherwise they would have had complete control over you.
Then he gaslights that I messed up Andrew by letting him messed up Andrew by getting him a job in my medical setting doing entry level tasks, a job moving boxes and scanning files that he moronically called white collar as it would spoil him and that instead what he really needed was a job like fast food so that he would appreciate a job like the one he has now and that he is supposed to and that his supposed cushy position would prevent him from being propelled into debt inducing higher education boomers love young people getting educations and houses they can't afford right it's all about anchoring you it's about crippling you he would rather your your brother work fast food with no future why because there's a better chance your brother would give him the money just like you did you doesn't want your brother working in a in an industry where there's advancement and where he can make money and be like fuck this i don't need this bullshit Toward the end of the email, he continues with verbal abuse, calling me asshole, punk, arrogant man-child, all in caps that only a boomer requ- all in caps lock that only a boomer requires to read. <clears throat> then he tried to justify his position in Social Security using the same old normie price we pay for civilized society arguments that show him to be the true sheep of the government that he is citing it as a quote deal that he made that was made with every american including me bullshit a deal that you all made for yourselves on our backs you fucking you fucking oh you fucking grifter you true grifter when the undeniable fact is that this quote deal was made decades before i was ever born much less available for comment yet despite that i am now required by law to pay for this so-called deal i never agreed to with the threat of going to prison if i do not leave it to the baby boomers to use the threat of violence from the state to force their own offspring to carry out their will consent be damned Finally, he demands in full boomer caps that I do not contact him any further since I have not contacted him and never will. Since then, I have not contacted him and never will. In the following months, he made several attempts to re- reinitiate contact, all of which we've collected for evidence but otherwise ignored he would later contact us several times in the future with phone calls emails regular mail with more verbal abuse victimhood and now recently with news of sick dying and deceased family members who he kept us isolated from this is called narcissistic hoovering and all these tactics and more have been used by narc to get their victims back into their lives any key to unlock i'll I save all these contact attempts as evidence. I could use all these emails and regular email in this submission, but of course, it's already way too long. <clears throat> the recording in PayPal. One day I received a letter in the in the mail from PayPal offering me one of their business products. The letter featured my name and address, but with the name of his online business. Oh, he was using your PayPal for his business? I did some research to find out why it was in my name and found out he was using an old PayPal account of mine to run this business, which is why his business name was my was next to my name and weirdly my new address. It, it was actually illegal for him to be earning the amount he was earning while collecting SSDI. Right, if he's collecting money and then you can't do that. It turns out that he earns so much with this online business that he doesn't qualify to receive any SSDI anymore. Normally they ref- move portions based on how much you earn but he doesn't qualify for sd ssdi at all at this point <clears throat> stupidly i trusted him with some of my passwords in the past but never would have done it if i knew they were going to use them to engage in what was illegal activity in my name i called paypal got a ca- got access to my account back withdrew the funds and mailed the funds to them even though I was not required, legally required to do. 
legally required to. I didn't want the money. It was dirty money, so I just sent it away. Pay told, PayPal told me that legally they were okay to give me access to my account back, and it was and and as it was, and it has been in my name since 2005, and that I could do whatever I want with the money that was in the account. Please listen to the phone call below where he initially calls and leaves messages, acting as though he was just reaching out, not making mention of any issues with PayPal. That is until he has to know until he has to know when he receives the funds in the mail. It escalates from there. You know I will always maintain no no I will always maintain no contact with him, my mother and sister who defends him, and always will. You Ollie would sooner talk to me, talk me into reaching out to him before I ever would. Th Thank you, Ollie. Chris. <clears throat> okay. So, on to the recording. That's about, it's good because my voice is going out. The recording is 20 minutes, so... Here we go. Hang up. Yeah. All right. Call to appeal to emotion without mention of me taking my PayPal account back, which is exactly what this is about. Chris, this is Dennis. Uh, I don't uh, really have the energy for this, but I'm going to just talk to you for a second. <clears throat> you have the energy to feed yourself, though, don't you, fat boy? Calls himself Dennis, huh? That's cool. Laura's been trying to contact you, and... Uh... Lori's his sister. Um, the reason I'm contacting you is I'm seeing a lot of damage here with Mummy and Lori uh, with what you guys have done. And to be honest with you, I don't really care for it. Uh, you can you already hear the fake cracking of the voice. <laughs> He's going to cry. A lot of pain, a lot of suffering for, for them. Crying themselves to sleep. Lori had a bad dream about you. She's worried about you. Um... I don't know what else to say. I'm not calling you to talk you out of into any, uh, out of anything or into anything. <clears throat> you feel about me the way you want to feel about me. <clears throat> Doesn't matter to me anymore. But I think you need to straighten out what you're doing with Laurie and straighten out what you're doing with Mom. Okay? They've done nothing to you. Okay? Neither did the dog. So he's admitting he did shit to you then. They've done nothing to you. So he's kind of admitting he's done shit. Neither did Daniel or uh, Nicholas. Nicholas. This is what they did. They just start throwing family member names out, thinking that you're responsible for their feelings. You're not. People have done anything to you. <clears throat> and you've hurt a lot of people that really care about you. And uh, before I, I let you go, I just wanted to say that, you know, we cared for you. It's more than half of my life. And you might think you have the right to do this, but you don't have the right to. Remember, he supported his immediate family for four years with nearly 100% of his income. Couldn't attend college, also had an apartment at one point, always paid room and board, and bought the appliances. His parents, or his people, or in the eyes of God. Okay? Everybody walks a different path. We all take different tests. And uh, if you if you have a newfound religion, good for you, but you shouldn't be judging anybody, okay? You need to straighten out what you're doing with Laurie and Mom, because I'm tired of seeing them suffer. If you don't call them back. Talking about God, and like you said, you pointed out uh, you pointed out the seven deadly sins: gluttony and wrath. What about sloth? <laughs> what about sloth? That's on you. And he doesn't call back. That's on him. I really don't know what you're about or what happened to you since you left here. Something serious happened to you. I don't. I don't have any idea what it was. Uh, yeah, he does. It could be that you know. Yeah, he does. You, you, all of a sudden, you had bills to pay, and you were forced to grow up. You're not in your, in your upper bedroom there anymore, and you're blaming us for the way the world is. I really, I really, I just don't know. We've tried to figure it out every night. We never can. I've prayed for you. I've forgiven you. Um, 
I talk to God about you. At this point, I just want you to take care oh, of my mother. Oh, come on, come on, come on, cry, baby, cry for me, cry. Cry for me, cry, baby. You probably won't hear from me again because... Uh, oh. Come on, cry, baby. I'm, uh, I'm running on one cylinder. Come on, get a good and, one. Uh, not that it matters, but uh, I did the best I could for you. Uh -huh. I you guess your best wasn't good, good enough. And I made sure you did. Or oh, did you? I made sure that I took the I made sure that you got good cars. I gave you good advice. We all have to get through college. So any doors that you open for Andy, we put your hand on the doorknob. You didn't and give good nutritional you advice. It wasn't for Jesus Christ and the help you got from your family. And the sooner you realize that, the better. And you better humble up because I think life's going to hand you a bowl of shit pretty soon. But, you know, just the way life is, that's how life is. Uh -huh. you, you need to straighten out your shit with mom and Laura because I'm getting really tired of seeing them suffer over this. So you think about that. And uh, if you ever do grow up enough that you want to talk to me, <laughs> chances are that grow up. there'll be nobody here to apologize to. If you ever grow up enough, you know, and I'm not on my having my fantasy mobility scooter Hummer fantasy in Walmart shooting Muslims, you know, you give me a call. So Andy, uh, that his parents loved him from the time we found out Mummy was pregnant uh, till this very moment, and he was never beaten and never hit because uh, it, it wasn't necessary. A threat of a spanking was enough for him, and he didn't even get that because he just never misbehaved. Never misbehaved. About repeated beatings for all three kids is just bullshit. A lot of oh, I only beat you. Oh, it was only you and your sister. Mixed with half -truth and <laughs> what a piece of shit. What a piece of shit. Oh, I didn't beat all three. As I didn't beat Andrew. He didn't need it. And you and your sister. What a fucking piece of boomer dog shit. I just really hope that you straighten yourself out. Because there's going to come a time that you're going to need your family. And no one's going to come to help you. So just tell Andy that we love him, and, and you need to straighten out your shit with Laurie and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Mom and, and Daniel and Nicholas. They've done nothing to you. All right. Go, go. Hello, Chris. This is Dennis. Listen, I got a, I didn't expect to be calling you back this soon. In fact, I promised myself I wouldn't, but I did get something in the mail today from you, from your address, and I wasn't sure what it was. I, so I opened it up, and, and you know that in there with some type of receipt. Looks like it might be PayPal related. And um, what you, you, uh, Ann and I are totally clueless as to what that's about. <clears throat> as we're sitting here thinking, um, it could be that maybe you pulled the wrong card out of your wallet and used the PayPal to pay for something. No shit bag. You found out you were using my name, you piece of shit. And I closed the account down. And then you realize what happened and now you're sending us the cash. I think that might be what's happening, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> I don't know how aware. Yeah, he's gaslighting you. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't understand. It's like, must have been some missing no motherfucker. And you were using the account. And I shut it down. There you are, what's going on with eBay, but the main guy, Devin Wedding, he uh, resigned the other day, and it's thrown eBay into a real tizzy. He's scared. The last two He's days, scared he here. Log into the <laughs> PayPal, which originally, <laughs> as you know, was your PayPal. Uh huh. There's the confession. Here, here this is it. Oh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's changes at eBay and PayPal. It's like, yeah. It's, that some of the information is incorrect and I've spent hours on the phone with PayPal and they're telling me it's a global security issue. What I'm wondering now is if maybe when you realized your error you went into <laughs> PayPal and the password was <laughs> which you set up and then he's trying to give you a story to call PayPal to give him the account like that this is what he's doing this is what he's doing maybe you changed the password I don't know. I'm, I'm, I really don't know if that's the case. Or maybe it's just PayPal is screwed up. But um, <clears throat> we can't reset the password uh, to get back in there because we don't know. <laughs> so 
so we can't reset the password and we can't get into PayPal. Okay. What an entitled. Oh. Oh, he's using your name to run some fucking business to scam SSI, and he's coming with this bullshit. He's coming with this bullshit. So I have funds in there. I can't download any of my tax information. I says, you know. Uh, it ain't yours. I need to download the full detail of my taxes for this year. I says, I'm probably not going to use that account again because we've, we've found a way around it. But I think it would be good if you could go in there and reset the password and let us know what it is. No. So I can transfer whatever funds I have no. and they're out of there, download my taxes, and then you can do what you want with that account. We really don't care. We're not going to be on eBay that much longer anyway, okay? But um, at this point, we're really stuck with them. I mean, I get on the phone with them. It's like pulling teeth. They don't want to know anything. Uh, normally, you could just get a password reset, but I, like I said, I don't have access to your, your eBay. I did this morning send you a rather lengthy letter. Uh, got a lot of things off my chest. Don't plan on bothering you again. Um, letter's pretty self-explanatory. And I did send some pictures in the original body of the letter that didn't go through, so I sent them in a second email. Um, that's a whole other issue. But like I said, we don't know what the is about. If you use the card by accident, uh, and you're sending us back the money, that's perfectly fine, you know. If you used your own PayPal card by accident, I'm paying you this, mo this fucking motherfucker. This motherfucker is trying to say you used your own PayPal card by accident. And because it's attached to his eBay, you're sending him the money for your purchases. He's out of his fucking mind. I've never known you to be a thief, okay? So, you know, I get it. I just to know what happened. And if you change the password, what a you know, fat let us know fuck. what it is so we can just get on What a fat fuck. Download our tax documents. I go, you really don't want that to come back on you tax-wise, whatever money we made. I go, let me take care of that, please. Yeah, it's all fear. So this is fear. You this don't is want that all fear. So, let us know what the password is or change the password and let us know what it is. So we can just get our money out, transfer our, our taxes, you know, download the, the, the CSV file, and then you can do whatever you want with that account. Close it, add to it, use it, it doesn't matter, you know. Just do me a favor, just send us an email or let us know. Um, now, he's putting up notes as, as as this plays. He's like, get this. He says he doesn't want the money out, however, when I later send him a second and final wave of a much smaller donation, he did a return to sender probably to feel like he has control or was rejecting it despite asking for it. This is typical for him with other things he used to say, never mind, I don't want it. So you'd feel bad. It's not so he'd feel bad. He realizes, listen, this is fear-based because he doesn't know what you're up to. If you're calling the cops, he got in a lot of fucking trouble. A lot of trouble. And I'm sure you know the email. Just take care of that if you can, okay? We'd appreciate it. And um, that's I bet it. you would. Is there anything else you want to add? No? Okay, so I, I guess that's it. Um, it's about need access to the PayPal account so I can get my money out, transfer my taxes. And um, that's it. Didn't plan on calling you, uh, but that's where it is. Okay. Thanks. Bye. You know, Chris, this is uh, Dennis again. As your mother and I are sitting here looking at this receipt, there's a possibility that you went into this PayPal account, withdrew all the available funds, and then sent it to us in cash. And yeah. You closed that account or blocked yeah, that dummy. In there. <laughs> yeah. I'm really hoping that's not the case. Because <laughs> you're striking on against us, in effect, putting us out of business with the only way we have to make a living. Oh, you? my God. It's your PayPal account. They're operating a business under your financial information. The entitlement of this month. This is boomers, man. This is fucking boomers. This is what they do. This is what they do. They think they can just take it. Oh, I was tried to be nice. Now I'm going to get fucking nasty about it. eBay. If that's the case, I really hope it's not the case. 
uh, if it is, you've sunk to a new low. I, oh, I'm not going right, to convict right. you of that at this point. Convict I'd really you. like you to Fuck call you, and dude. explain this. Fuck you. Um, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Here's my explanation. Go fuck yourself, fat boy. Go fuck yourself. If you don't call me back, I'm going to take it to mean that that's what you did. Good. Um, Good. There's more money that's gone in there since from, from eBay <clears throat> that uh, you need to send to us. <clears throat> wow. Wow. If you're trying to hurt us by blocking us out of that PayPal, um, we've already arranged for another PayPal. Good. So it... PayPal is easy to open. Anybody who needs an email address to open up a fucking PayPal. It really didn't work. <clears throat> and I think that... And I guarantee if he opened it, he opened it in your sister's name, not in his. Not in his. You know, in that original letter I sent you, I told us that if you mess with us in any way, there'd be a consequence. Oh, is um, there? I don't think you have any idea. <laughs> exactly how much information I have about you. Oh, God, the boomer go threats. Here that. come the boomer threats. There are things that I know about you and documents that I have about you that would end your Thanks, career, Dad. End your life. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. You know, it would take a lot. Thanks, Dad. Dude, I should give him fucking meet Normus's number. The two of them could go bowling. For me to do that, but if you're going to strike out against us like this, if that's what you actually did, but I'm going to give it some serious thought. Well, you know what the response should be? You know what? I'll give it some serious thought whether or not to, to, to notify SSI of, of, of what you've been doing, of this money you've been collecting. It's not a threat. It's just a reaction to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really, I, I don't even know you anymore. I just really don't. It's hard to believe that you're my flesh and blood. I, I just don't know. Like I said, I'm going to give you the benefit of the Why? Because he has some self-control over what he puts in his mouth? Yeah, it's hard to believe. It is hard to believe. The doubt um, on this and, and, until I hear from you. If you don't call me or write me a letter telling me what you did and, you, and I can't access this PayPal account, that uh, I'm going to take it to mean <clears throat> that you withdrew the funds, sent it to me and closed the account, or, or made it so we have no access. Yeah. <laughs> and what's going to happen without my tax file is they're going to tax you, okay? So you're going to be paying tax <laughs> on your Social Security number, okay? Do yourself a favor, all right? Yes, you should report him to SSI. Yes, you should report him to SSI. It's all your information that you're going to have to pay. Do you think he was going to fucking pay taxes on that? Do you really think he was going to pay taxes in your name? It's in your name. So how is he paying taxes on it exactly? He wasn't. Give me access to the account so I can download my taxes. And if you're not going to do that, then deal with it. All right? Um, if I don't hear from you, I'm going to take it to mean that that's what you did. I hope you didn't do that. I really do. And I'm going to explore the options I have as far as... Yeah, you explore them, buddy. You know I mean. If you value your job, <laughs> if you value your life, job. Uh -huh. if you value what you've earned, a piece of garbage, fucking then you need to reverse boomer it. trash, boomer if trash. Then all sorts of shit is probably mm -hmm. going to start happening to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the only one that has <laughs> shit that can fly in your direction. Right. right. You have no Thanks, idea what Thanks, Dad. I'm about what a dad. Here. Not even a clue. What a dad. I think you need to be worried because. I don't know. He's the one who surprised your fresh and blood. Okay? He's the one by you closing an account that he was screwing you over on as he's threatening your fucking livelihood and your and and your fucking licenses like I have no idea. Is there Because you're a boomer piece of shit. That's why. Any limit to what you do, what you won't do to your parents? Is there any fucking limit? Holy shit, what in the flying fuck is wrong with you? All right, well, I'm going to let it go. Um, send me the password for PayPal so I can access the account, transfer whatever funds I have left, and um, download my taxes, okay, so that I can keep that off you. Um, then you can do it. Then you can do whatever you want with you. And there's your mother fucking backing him up. There she is. There's the fucking flying monkey backing him up in the goddamn background. Fuck them both. That's why you you take no pity on either one of them. I don't care. 
Um, beyond that, um, what was I going to say? Give me a second. Nothing in town. Feed me? Beyond that, um, I don't know. I had another thought, but it's left me. I'm uh, sure. I don't I'm sure it's I want to eat. Your, your take, you know, a real man would have called me and said, I don't like you having access to this PayPal. I'm not comfortable with it anymore. I don't want to help you people. I have my reasons. Uh, take your money out and do it, but I'm going to change the password in two or three days. You know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, but instead, if you did this, then you... You sent them this letter of all your fucking issues, okay? Of all your fucking issues and then close the PayPal and send... And you're telling me he can't put two and two together? Like, come on here. You don't need explanation. You know why. buffering hold on how to restart it and do it but I want to change the password in two or three days you know whatever whatever yeah but instead if you did this then you did it in a devious and deceptive way and you how do you be devious and deceptive with your own fucking information? This is the this is the fucking baby boomer entitlement over your entire life, your finances, all of it, all of it. They think they're just fucking entitled to it. You really need to check yourself. I think you, I, there's something <laughs> evil in you that you need to rid yourself. Of. I don't know if you. Oh, someone else's Jesus! Advice. He's evil. I don't. I have no idea what's wrong with you. But if you did, if you, you need to call me or, or email me and let me know what you did, and if you didn't do this, that's fine. And if you did, that's fine too. But be mad enough to tell me. But if you don't call me, I'm going to make the, the, the come to the conclusion that you. Yeah, it's me for the last time. Um, I just want to make it clear that if you don't call me or email me and let me know what you did, uh, I'm going to make the conclusion that you did this on purpose to close us out of the PayPal and put us out of business. Gee, you think? You think? I'm giving you that warning. And then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do about it. Uh-huh. Uh, do, do you... Yeah. Then I'm going to have then I'm going to have six bacon double cheese and four extra large fries, you know, cuz I really going to have to ponder. It's a tough decision. You know, not one you want to make on a fucking on, a, on on only a three times overstuffed stomach. You want it to be at least eight times overstuffed stomach. You know, you want to make sure want to make sure you got enough, you know, you got enough food energy to get through that decision. Do yourself a favor and open the lines of communication. Be mad enough to even call here or email me. Don't hide behind your phone. Don't hide behind an email. Grow a set of balls and call me on the phone, okay? No one's going to yell. No one's going to be upset. No one's going to talk to you about anything. I just want to know what you did with this PayPal. If you don't call me, I'm going to assume that you just took the funds and sent them to me to fuck us up. And... Fucking us up is a two-way street, and you have no idea the amount of things that I have that I can send to <laughs> that he'll it'll be jaw-dropping for him. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, The Dad. things I know about you, great. You have no idea. Okay. Mm. You've got a lot of skeletons in your closet. Okay, a lot of them. I know things about you that you don't even know. Okay. So, huh. You know, you documented in the email about the, the hyperbaric chamber. Let's, let's see how the people who license you feel about that. That you actually helped me construct a class this two is why. device you in my garage. You fat fuck. You fat fucking piece of goddamn boomer trash. Exactly. It's exactly why you don't help them. They don't fucking care. And you're the man child, right? You're the man child. Fuck this fat fuck. Report him. Report his fat ass. Report his fat ass. And your career pretty quickly. You need to call me. Okay? Sack of shit. You really need to call me. Do the right thing, okay? Yeah, do the right thing. If you don't call me, I'm gonna t I'm gonna take it to mean that you did this on purpose, and mm -hmm. that changes everything.
Chris. This is your mother. Um, if you could please call me back here. No. I'm just calling to keep the peace. No, no, no. I heard your fat mouth blathering in the background, backing them up. Okay, you could sit and spin on it too, cunt. Thing we need is to get into the PayPal account for five minutes to get. Go open your own PayPal. Go open your own PayPal, bitch. What are you calling me? How dare you? How dare you? Six calls to try to get access to an account that isn't yours. Our tax information. So it isn't your tax information. It's his tax in information. Just that's all we need. That's all we want. I need to be able to file taxes in January. And then, you know, I'll let you know when we've got our information out of there. And then you can change the email and the passcode password to anything that you want. Okay? Gee, thank you for giving me fucking permission to do what I want on my account. Fuck you. Fuck you. You get nothing. You get nothing, boomer. You get nothing. Go back and sit on that fucking high horse. Oh, what? What happened? That the horse died? I understand it's hard to sit on a, on a high horse when every time you sit on it, it fucking dies. Fat fuck. Okay, and you won't hear from us again. Yeah, That's right. All we need. Please call me back or email us with the information. I just need in there for five minutes and then we'll be done. Okay? Other than that, this will escalate, and I don't know what's going to happen on Monday at your office. Okay? Uh-huh, and there he is pulling, yep, and there he is pulling her strings in the background. There he is. They're a fucking tandem, dude. They're a tag team. Just try to keep the peace, Chris. We don't want a war. Yeah, because you'll lose. You don't want a war, but he just spent the last two fucking phone calls threatening his job, his career, his license. I'm going to fucking say, say you helped me build a level two hyperbaric chamber. Eat dick. Okay? Eat it. Fatso. And you don't want a war. Fucking all oh, these... <clears throat> I need the login email. You don't need shit. For five minutes you got your money. You don't need shit. Detail. Don't let it escalate. Do the mature thing here. You can trust us. You've been yeah. <laughs> you can trust us even though I threatened your job. You're our son. We threatened your job and your license and your medical license and your career. But you can trust us. Fuck off. We're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. With the account, other than get the tax information, mm -hmm. then you can change it to whatever you want. Yeah, thanks again. To you. Permission. Don't make it escalate. <laughs> you don't want it to go any further. You're gonna make it We're escalate. To keep the <laughs> but how would you feel if you couldn't file your taxes? We need the PayPal income, the shipping, for January through September. Okay, that's all we need. So just call me back, or please email us with the information. So we can get in there for five minutes. We'll let you know when we're done. And then you can close the account. You can change the username and password to whatever you like. That's all we want. And we won't bother you or Andy again. Okay? That's it. That's all we need. You're good at saying bye-bye. Listen, um... This is uh, the person that you hate the most in the world, and you're trying to ruin my life. Listen, here's the deal. Congratulations <laughs> on your... Good purchase for you. Great. Congratulations. All right, so yeah, Chris bought a car, and he's, like, naming this shit that he has information that Chris bought a car. He also got notifications that he changed the policy payment schedule, but then changed it back. Had to call the company and set up a personal passcode. You need to change your password, okay? I have access to it and I don't want it, okay? So just change your password. Um, the other thing is that, uh, did you get fired? Did you quit voluntarily? Or were you trying to fuck his wife or some, some type of impropriety? You're, you moved all the way out there to be in his practice and then you quit your job or you lose your job.
Okay, plot twist. I warned my boss about his threats to call and his attempts had no effect. They had other reasons to believe he was a problem. Also, he used to say that my boss's wife was a trophy wife. So it's interesting that he pins that on me when she was born the same year as him. Listen to this guy. <clears throat> so now, boomer piece of shit, I guess, tried to call Chris's job. You've had like five, six jobs in the last few years. I just look at your resume. Pitiful. You're <laughs> fucking up your life. And, and you know what? Good for you. Good for you. All right? Change your Geico password. And, uh, what'd you, you know, Chris, what'd you do? Did you, did you sign your house over to the fuck? And they let you live there and they're making the payments? You're a complete moron. I spent more than half my life putting you in a good position so you could have everything you want out of life and you're throwing it away. You know what you can do, Chris? You can go fuck yourself. He didn't, it's just a shame that you took your brother with you. He didn't get his way. He didn't get his way, so now they have to make up your life. Listen, I've been accused of being in mental institutions, being in jail, you know, <clears throat> having warrants out again. It, when they don't get their way, they start making up shit. Okay, he didn't get you fired. He couldn't get you kicked out of your house. He couldn't get any of it. He, he, and he doesn't have any integrity, so he can live in his little twatty bedroom he gave him. So, change We Change them all. All right, there's a lot of shit on my computer I can get into, and I don't want to. Just change all your passwords, you asshole. Misery loves company, right? That's why you fucked me up on PayPal. Well, you didn't fuck me up on PayPal. And now we're doing work with Discovery Channel. So I'm <laughs> succeeding and you're failing. Eat shit. Wow. I'm succeeding, you're failing. That's what your dad says to you. Okay, Discovery Channel. What did they think? You were a new planet? <clears throat> Boy, are they going to get pissed that you're not a new planet or an asteroid that hit. That you're just a fat boomer fuckwad. Boy, are they going to be pissed. If you were doing anything, you wouldn't be all fucking butthurt trying to make up a fucking life or bad things or bad karma happening in his life or, 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 or Andrew's life. Wow. Wow, almost two hours. I knew that was going to be a long one. Chris, you cannot go back. I mean, I think you know that already. I mean, what you got here is a fucking boomer man child. Is the ultimate, is the ultimate example of your of your boomer fucking man child accusing you of what they are, of doing everything they do, of being what they are. It is just fucking. I mean, boomer boomer logic, boom boomerism, whatever you want to call it. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And they think they're entitled to do whatever they want to you. Damage your career. Disparage your career. Disparage it. Use it for their advantage when it, when it suits them. Use your information when it suits them. And you have to take it. And then, even after they get caught, they're still going to tell you what you can and can't do with your own fucking PayPal account. What they want. What they need. They go fuck themselves. Permanently. Get fucked and stay fucked. That's what I say to the fucking boomer. And stay stay away from these people permanently. Permanently. Change all your passwords. Change your phone numbers. Block the numbers. You don't need it. The fact that you're even giving them the voicemail to bitch and moan at is too much. Don't. Cut it all off. Cut it all off and keep living your life. That's the best advice I can give you, Chris. So, thank you so much <clears throat> for your contribution and your story. Thank you to Teresa for also partially sponsoring as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you also, Chris, for cutting it down. When Chris originally sent me this, the story was over was over 38 pages, 38,000 38, words. He got it down to just under 9,000. So this could have gone on and on and on and on and on and on. So, and it, and it did. It was long. It was long, but it was a hell of a story. It really was. 
well written, well put together, and the and the audio at the end is just the fucking icing on the cake. So stay away from them, man. That's just what they are. Just a big fat job of the hut. It's job of the hut without carbonite. So he uses his fucking fat and his bullying tactics to keep everybody enslaved to him. Sitting on his fucking pedestal because you can't sit on a fucking high horse at 550 without killing it. Well, it's dead now. Might as well eat it, huh, fat boy? God, the worst. Just the arrogance and the entitlement that we've all heard out of these fucking baby boomers. And yes, I know it's not all of you. There's certain people, if you say it again, that's going to be it. It's going to be the last time you comment. It's going to be the last time you comment if you say it again. Because I have been crystal clear. But there is no getting around what we just heard and what we just listened to and what we have heard repeatedly on this channel. This is the world the baby boomers have set up, this entitlement of them being able to do and say whatever they want to you, about you, permanently. So... I hope that helps. Thank you so much for, again, thank you again for the contribution and story. Thank you, for Teresa, as well, for sponsoring as well. I hope it all helped. Thank you to everybody watching. If you made it this long, <clears throat> please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to have a private video made, or you'd just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And YouTube and Google are trying to make it go away sooner than later. So it is important. You know what to do with those links. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. Also, be sure to follow me on the library app, which links are also available in the description box below. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been <clears throat> the Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.